Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and in today we are continuing our Necromunda project. We are going to continue on with episode 14 which will be a part of our gang stronghold and this episode will feature the boss the shack. I'm gonna show you. Because we needed a cool place for our boss to dwell in. And uh, I was kind of excited to build this one. And what really interests me about this one is that the roof can come off. See? So you can uh, have the boss be here and play around. And it just slides back on. Like this. So, without further ado, if you guys want to see how I built this thing, follow me to the crafting table and let's do this! All right, my friends, let's begin with another Necromunda craft. Here's some images of the finished piece with the boss standing inside of his shack. All right, so to begin this, we're going to start by taking a single piece of corrugated cardboard and I'm going to draw a rectangle that is 15 centimeters by 20 centimeters. This will be my platform. And proceed to cut this thing out. As it is single corrugated cardboard, you will cut through it with ease. so we have our base now let's make some pillars for our base and I'm using a tin foil tube and this will be my concrete pillars and I'm making them five centimeters in height and you're gonna need four of those things just use a hobby saw to cut through this if you don't have it you can use an alpha blade but it is a little bit trickier as it is very thick cardboard but it is doable and remember, you're going to need four. Now I'm taking another piece of cardboard and I'm going to cut eight five centimeter squares. Because one of those squares will uh, go on top of uh, the concrete pillar and the other will go on the bottom. So you will need eight of them to uh, create eight to create uh, four pillars. Now with either foam board or cardboard we're gonna make the walls and they will be 13 centimeters long, 10 centimeters in height and on the opposite side we're gonna make one that is 7 centimeters height and we're gonna connect the line and cut through that. So we will have one side that is 10 centimeters high and the other side will be 7 centimeters high. Now use it as a template to trace out the second wall. this now for our door I'm going to measure four centimeters from the left side like this and the door itself will be three and a half centimeters wide and I've marked out the halfway point as well and from the halfway point I'm drawing up a line that is four and a half centimeters up this will be the center part of our door now I'm going to use a square 10 by 10 centimeters and a rectangle 7 centimeters by 10 centimeters. This will be the side walls. I'm going to proceed by cutting out the door. And I'm also going to create a back door on the other side of the wall because the boss needs a place to escape just in, in case things get hairy. <laughs> now I'm going to start by measuring two centimeters from the side and tracing my door and proceed to cut this one out as well. Like this. Now let's build the concrete pillars that hold up the platform. Just hold these, uh, just hot glue these parts together to create some nice looking pillars. They will support our platform. And we're gonna hot glue these in the corners of the platform. If you prefer, you can use white glue, but for this, I'm simply using hot glue. It goes a lot faster. And with, like this, we have our platform. So now let's glue our shack together, shall we? Just a seven centimeter will be glued to the seven centimeter part. Like this. And then we're gonna glue the 10 centimeter square in, as a back wall. Just hot glue, put hot glue on there and slide that into position. Now we're going to glue it onto the platform in the top left corner. 
again using hot glue. taking shape quite nicely. Now I had these toy barricades, but if you don't have them, just build a, a railing or a, out of cardboard or foam board. As I, you can see me show you here how you could do that as well. But I have these toys, so I might as well use them. Now I'm gonna clip off these uh, side pieces of it and I'm gonna hot glue these all around the building. Well, the, all around the porch. Just leaving a, an open area where the door is. And then continue to go around. First I decided to maybe make a piece of cardboard for a full metal one on this side. But uh, I quickly swapped that idea out and uh, continue to go on with my railings all around the porch. Like this. Nice. All right, so we're going to create an overhang for our front door. Just take a piece of uh, cardboard and I'm going to glue that into position. The cardboard is, well, just see, I didn't really measure it, but it is three centimeters uh, wide. I don't, the length you can choose that for yourself you can make it as long or as small as you want now I'm using these toy pieces that I've used for a lot of builds for pipe details you can just uh, use cardboard tubes or uh, PVC pipes if you have it I just had these and I'm using them because <laughs> they look cool now I also glued in a coffee cap to go and uh, I'm gonna go around the, uh, the building with a paper drinking straw which I cut at one side at a 45 degree angle measure that to the side of my building and then another one that I also cut at the same angle to connect these two pipes together marking out where the end should be and I'm cutting that again with a 45 degree angle tilting downwards as I uh, want this pipe to go around the building and then going down like this and attach another piece of a uh, paper drinking straw now I'm simply using white glue to glue on corrugated paper on the overhang. <clears throat> As it is paper on cardboard, it glues in, in a matter of seconds. Now with some barbecue skewers, measure them to seven centimeter in height, so they're against the seven centimeter wall and mark that out and cut them to size using some clippers. And I'm gonna glue these uh, one of them I'm going to glue into the corner here, as these will be the support beams that will hold up our roof. Just glue one into the corner here, and the other one we're going to measure with the end of the building, the, with the shack, and we're going to mark that position, as you see me do here. Just draw a line from the edge of the building to there, and we're going to glue the second barbecue skewer against the railing here as well. Now for the roof, uh, I measured it with the top of the building all the way with the two barbecues, barbecue skewers that we just glued on. And here I'm marking where the shack ends and I'm going to fold the cardboard at this line here so that it will lay better when uh, we're going to attach it like this. Now I'm marking at the end here as well inside so I'm gonna glue some uh, foam board strips inside here so our roof will have a better thing to grab a, grab a hold to so it won't slide all over the place it will stay locked in position as you see here here I'm marking the end of the building and I'm cutting that off as well just laid flush with the barbecue skewers I hope you're still following me <laughs> Now we're going to set the roof aside for a second and we're going to add some more details with another paper drinking straw, attaching that to the big pipe here. I just love detailing these things. <laughs> just put hot glue down and stick it on. 
Just make sure the building stands flush when you glue the straw into position so that it's flush with the table in the bottom. Now from work I have these toilet rolls and these plastic caps, they make for great detailing. So I'm putting that on top of this uh, big pipe. Just a nice little feature. Now I'm gonna cut cardstock squares and with a hole punch I'm gonna create rivets. Then glue it all around the porch everywhere. Make sure that you overlap them as well. Just as you see me create rivets here. Just overlap them, glue them into position. Also gluing corrugated paper as well to represent corrugated metal. Just go nuts. Like this. I'm fiddling around, cutting it to uh, some pieces, just overlapping them here. I'm simply gluing these on with white glue as well. You can use hot glue too. Here I'm using hot glue, for instance, for the corrugated paper, as it tends to uh, well, curl, so uh, hot glue is better for that. Now for uh, the interior and uh, the parts, porch of the front door, I'm using a drywall mesh tape that I cut to size. And it's self-adhesive, so it sticks immediately. Like this. Do the same for the inside as well. Just measure it like this, cut it to size and then stick it down. Cool. And I'm also adding a little bit of a, a plate as detail extra on the inside as well. Now cover the entire exterior of the shack with cardstock panels and corrugated paper sheets. Just go nuts, glue it all over the shack on the outside. You can glue them tilted, crooked, overlap go nuts with this and I'm also gluing in another coffee cup for a ventilation detail just have fun with this now set it aside for now let's continue with our roof we're gonna weigh it down by using some washers that I'm hot gluing into position it will make sure that the roof lays flush on top of uh, the shack now cover the roof with corrugated paper all over Flip it over, trim it to size, continue to glue more corrugated paper down. Doesn't have to align, just go nuts with this. And I'm also gluing in some more extra panels that I had laying about. Now another uh, vitamin bottle, I'm gluing on a piece of toilet roll. To stick that to the side of the piping as well. This can be a distillery for alcohol or whatever the boss is making. <laughs> I don't know, just be creative. And with another piece of toilet roll and the plastic cap, I'm cutting it a little shorter, smushing it in, hot gluing that on top of my roof. The more details, the better. <laughs> now with my template, I'm creating some stairways. The template, I've built that in episode 5, so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. And for the steps, I'm just using a piece of uh, cardboard with some drywall mesh tape glued on top of it. This will be the steps of the front porch. There will also, later I will use the same technique to create a stairway in the back. But you will see that later. Just using the same technique as I'm using here. Now, again, more pipes, more details. I really love pipes. <laughs> just hot glue that into position. And, yeah, well, remove the strings of the hot glue. Nice. It really looks cool. I loved all those pipings and those ventilations. Now, for the doors, I'm going to create some tarp instead of doors. Just wanted to do something different. And I'm using a wet wipe and I'm covering it in PVA glue and then soaking it up with a little bit more, of, with a little bit more water. Just brushing it all in. Now I'm folding and tearing it to size and it will peel off the silica mat with no effort when it's dry. Just uh, make two for the door, for each, one for each door. Just uh, sculpt that with a brush a little bit into shape that you want it to hang. 
doesn't matter if it's too long once it's dry you can cut it just like paper create some folds and let it dry now with the excess um as it is covered in pva glue i'm slapping that on the roof dabbing it down with a little bit more water and i'm using my glass and sitting on top of it so that uh, it can dry while it's hanging down now um, while the cloth is drying i'm going to continue by making a back porch and i'm using more of the cardboard tubing to create two more concrete pillars and here i'm gluing them onto another piece of uh, foam board that i'm sticking to the back here and i'm also gluing some drywall mesh tape over it trimming that from the back with my alpha knife and i'm gonna hot glue that on the back door like this now some more details on the whatever it is the alcohol distillery let's say <laughs> Just slap details on that thing, just go nuts. As long as it looks cool, it will be cool. Now once the cloth is dry, I'm gonna hot glue that into place. Just measure it with the door using some hot glue on, and then stick it into position. Like so. Here you can see the, the back door and the front door, the tarp is hanging a little bit open. Now I had some leftover that I'm simply hot gluing and hanging that over the railing. Extra details. Details are always good. <laughs> now with some cardboard I'm going to create a railing at the back uh, porch. And just make sure you don't uh, make it higher than two centimeters so your guys can still aim their guns over it like this and just for uh, the back of the porch do the same mark that out with a pen take a piece of scissor snip that into position measure it then cut it to size and hot glue that into position like this there we go and I'm also going to create the same way as I just did before, a staircase that runs up to the back porch. Again, if you want to see more of that, just check out episode 5 of my Necromunda project. I go into a big detail to how to make steps. Now, pram everything black. For my go-to painting, overbrush everything with brown except for the concrete pillars. Those who've seen my videos before know that this is my way to paint Necromunda terrain. Cover everything in brown, everything, once it's sprayed black, everything an overbrush of brown. And I'm, for the concrete, I'm gonna stipple a dark gray over it, and then I'm gonna stipple a lighter gray over it, and let that dry. It will dry darker. Now, over the brown, just dry brush and stipple everything with a silver paint. Look at me go, I'm so fast. <laughs> All stipple it with silver, dry brush, overbrush. Have fun with it. It's Nick Ramunda, it doesn't have to be nice. <laughs> now, with some colors, I'm using it. Uh, just cover all the corrugated paper with a different color or the same color, whatever you prefer. Just make sure that it matches your color scheme that you guys like. I'm using the same I'm using for all my, that I've used for all my Necromunda projects. Just these uh, vibrant colors, they stand out against the uh, decaying metal parts. Now the barriers here, I'm, cre I'm painting them yellow and the vat gets a brush, an overbrush with some uh, off-white color. Now, I paint the cloth in a variety of colors as well, so just choose whatever color you guys prefer. Now, for the rust effect, I stipple brown and then again stipple over that with some orange to create the rust effect. Here you can see me putting on the brown and 
then I go over everything that I made brown with my uh, bright orange. As you see me do here. Do not forget the interior of the building. Go all over it. Next I'm gluing on some hazard stripes that I've printed out and all the paper, uh, all the cables and the pipes got a coat of black paint. And here I'm gluing on a wanted poster, just white glue, glue it on and then I'm going over it with a thin runny brown wash to make it look weathered. Here I'm doing the same with another poster, going over it with a brown wash, simply brown paint and water. Did the same for the interior of the building. And finally I spray water over the entire thing, just a quick spray and I'm scraping a pastel all over where I want uh, some more rust to be uh, textured, like this. And once that is done, I take my spray bottle of water again and spray it from afar. Don't soak it, just simply give it a light spray, like this, a dusting. That's more than enough and it will seal the pastel into place. As you can see me do here on the roof as well. Big spray. Now let us look at the finished piece in combination with our previous build gang stronghold terrain. Here we can see one of our gangers standing in front of the gateway who just opened it. Some guys manning the walls, checking everything out. As you can see it matches well with the tiles. And here we have the boss a shack with a guy just exiting, going down the stairs. Let's have a look. Here's the boss loading up his plasma gun. Gonna shoot probably maybe his companion in the back. <laughs> Let's have a look at the back of the building. The back porch here with the tarp that is closed. So yeah, looking cool. And here we have our watchtower. Some guys having a look. So this is the third part of our gang stronghold of our Necromunda project. And I have a lot more things to do. Not only of the gang stronghold, but just for Necromunda. There is so much that I still want to do, so be sure to stick around for that, guys. So I would like to thank you all very much for, wa for watching. It really means a lot for all your continued support. Thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. And a lot more to come, so I would say stay tuned. And I will see you on the next one, guys. Hope you had fun. See you next time. Bye for now. See ya.